Hi guys, Judith from the Intuitive Body Foodie Network and I am dedicating this video today to Linnea Jorgensen who asked me if I would show you what products I use for my hair. So come and I'll show you. So a little bit of a mess here. Uh, this is my coloring cape, my hair cutting cape. For those of you who do not know, I have been cutting my hair since I was 15. Uh, in my late 20s, I went to hairdressing school, and um, yeah, uh, I've been coloring my hair, well, I guess probably since my early 20s, and I did used to use chemicals, and I noticed that every time I'd use chemicals, I would get headaches and dizziness and nausea and just all sorts of things. So. Um, I was extremely happy when I came across All Natural Henna for hair. Now forgive me, I do not have the package that um, of, for this, but it's called Nupar and I will put the link in the description box below. This is um, what I use on my hair. Uh, at this point, because I color my hair red, um, now you'll notice that in my videos I have brown tips and that's because I used Nurani brown henna quite a while ago and I'm trying to get that color out which is why I cut my hair. My hair used to be down to my buttocks uh, so I cut off about 36 inches I guess and this is what I still use on my eyebrows because my natural hair color is a dirty ash blonde or dark ash blonde and if you look at my arms like you don't really see hair and if you do it's just blonde so I have eyebrows but they're so blonde that unless I color them you don't see them and then I just look like I'm a, a weirdo so I color with brown still my eyebrows and this is what I use for my hair so now let me show you how simple it is to use this because I'm only touching up my roots, I don't need tons of this, about a cup or so. Maybe a couple of cups. And I make this um, product. Uh, it has all the nourishing things that my hair needs and I will create a separate video on that and link it to this video. Uh, needless to say, this has um, avocado oil, jojoba oil, carrot seed oil, just a bunch of really incredibly nourishing um, oils for my hair. And typically I add a couple tablespoons. And then it's real simple, just water. And all you want to do is make a paste that is kind of yogurt-like in consistency. So that's too thick. And yeah, I just used regular tap water. So you can see it's kind of lumpy. That's okay. But it's still, yeah, actually that's good. That's a good consistency right there. And now all you need to do is once you have gotten it to a yogurt-like consistency. Uh, you need it to sit for one to three hours. I usually leave mine for a good three hours and that will allow that to activate. So I just put a lid on it, wash up my brush, and it is currently 9.15 in the morning. I'm in the process of doing a bunch of things, including laundry. Uh, so I will hopefully be done by then and be able to do my hair. Now, one thing I do want to say is uh, my hair, like I just woke up, I haven't washed it. You don't want to wash your hair. Um, pick a day, if you're going to do this, when you haven't washed your hair for a couple days. So it's been three and a half hours and that's okay. Uh, you can go upwards to four hours with this color. So 
as you can see I've just kind of got this tucked in by the way this is a child's um, hair cutting cape usually they're quite longer and I've destroyed my adult cape which is why I wear my hair cutting cape as you can see it's quite long and that's to protect my clothing because sometimes it spills down and then I have my little cape just uh, to protect any color from going down on my neck and it's really simple if you've never done hair before you're going to need um, these little clips or big clips if you have longer hair when my hair was down on my butt I would use several of these and the principle is really quite similar you start at the crown from the top of the crown forward an even relatively even division and you want to do the same to the back so essentially you part your hair in fours so this one will come just behind the ear this will be one section this will come behind the ear that'll be two sections and then you'll have your two sections in the back I hope you can see that I'm not being able to see through this the viewer uh, because my hair is shorter it's a little more different um, to do for me because I can't uh, clip it as much now that said regardless of whether I'm just touching up my roots today so regardless of whether you're touching up your roots or you're coloring your hair for the first time similar principle applies you soak your brush and starting at the roots I hope you guys can see that you go right down into the root and then brush downward and then do the other side this is your first application probably not being able to see anything are you I don't know where my tripod is otherwise I'd have it I'd use my tripod I guess I'll just use my left hand I'm ambidextrous so I do things just as effective with my left hand as I do my right hand okay so that's your starting and then of course you would do this to the back as well like I said you'd create a part and when you are working with just you and no one else you need a mirror a hand mirror and let's see if I can show you this essentially you're going to work like this so you're going to have one hand using the mirror and the other hand is going to be parting and applying the color yes it's a bit of a circus act uh, I've been doing this like I said for since I was 15 I'm 53 you do the math it's been a long time that I've been doing this okay so say I did the back just hypothetically I'm not going to do the whole thing for you guys today here um, but I will show you so the next thing is take a thin piece of hair part it and then apply so I'm just doing my roots I'm only going halfway down if you're doing the whole hair I would recommend that you do three quarters way down and do your tips last although that said you can do your tips right down to your tips if you want uh, say the color is fading go right down to the tips all at once and you just want to work one side of the hair to the next and as you get around you can put cotton around your ear or you can use um, some sort of petroleum jelly I don't um, just because petroleum jelly is uh, toxic uh, I just simply color around can you see that okay I color the hair around and then I just take a cloth and that I can wash that I use like an old rag just for hair coloring and I will wash around my ears afterwards and that's it and then you're going to I have a little bit more here to do you're going to flip it over do the other side and do the back 
So once the color is all in, and I would not recommend you do this with uh, chemical synthetic colors, only natural henna, you can massage it into the scalp. The reason why um, you don't want to do a synthetic or a chemical is because when you massage it into your scalp, it will kill your hair follicle. Anything that you have left over, so I have left over, um, ideally, you can just take it and once you've, like I said, I, again, I would not do this with anything that was synthetic or chemical, only an all-natural product. And if you want, I usually, at this point, sorry, at this point I will do my tips. I don't like doing my tips too much with the brown because it just darkens the brown and I'm trying to grow the brown out of my hair. But it gives it a fresh look, adds a little bit more red to that brown in the sunlight especially. And you can use a one plastic, one time plastic as a, a head bag. Again, they do sell the bags um, in beauty supply stores uh, that cater to hairdressers. Uh, and you can by all means use that. Or you can just use an old um, shower cap that you have. Um, obviously not one that you actively use in your bathtub, but you can use an old shower cap. Part of the reason why you want to seal it is to lock in heat. And when you lock in the heat, because your head gives off a lot of heat, it helps the color take better. Um, if you've watched any of my videos on um, the lunar cycles, uh, health, diet, and fitness by the lunar cycles, there are more favorable times. Today is one of those days. So typically when the moon's in Libra or Taurus, it tends to be a more favorable time for coloring hair. But if you want to learn more about that, I'll put a link in the description box below. Uh, lunar health and beauty and the one that I'm going to share with you I believe is specific to the time zones where I live but I'm certain that if you do a little more research on Google uh, you can find something for your area. So now at this point you just want to take a cloth and clean up any drips, your ears, because you're dealing, well I am with this, I'm dealing with uh, red, it turns out red, it will change the color of your skin to red. It's like a natural henna, but if you don't get it out um, right away, don't worry, it will wash out and be gone within about three days. It usually fades away, that's what I've observed. Um, so now I just want to wrap my head. If your hair is really long, you will want to use these to clip it and hold it up on your head. The other thing is you don't want to oversaturate. So as you're taking that extra and rubbing it into your roots to make sure that all your roots get um, color, you don't want to put so much color that after you've put the bag on that it drips down. If that's a concern for you, just take some paper towel Kleenex cotton balls and line around the hairline and then put your bag on. And you want to seal the bag. So again, this is just a grocery store bag. I'm not going to be fussy. And, and then what I do is I take one of these, can you see that? A little clip and I twist it up here somewhere so that it's snug, reasonably snug, because I don't want a lot of air getting in there. I want to keep the heat, I want to keep the heat in. Try to make sure the back of your hair is covered. And that's it. So I wash my gloves while they're still on my hands and then I remove them inside out, like so. Put your mouth in there below. Let's see if I can show you here. And then leave them to dry and they're good to use again. Now technically at this point, because I don't need this, I can remove all of this. Now, if 
you're concerned because I mean it does happen to me still if you're concerned about color leaking down then definitely wear uh, something around your shoulders whether it's a towel or whatever sometimes what I'll do is because this gets this gets really hot you'll sweat in this in the winter it's fine if it's cold in your house but in the summer it can be quite sweltering so sometimes what I'll do is I'll take this I want to wash it first and then I'll just put this back on that way I know that I'm covered what can you use if you don't have this for this go to the dollar store and buy a poncho one of those plastic ponchos and if it's really wide at the neck then that's where you can use these things to close it up so that it's tight against the neck or you can put a towel a small towel wrap it around your neck and then put the um, the poncho over top at least that will protect you from getting color all over your clothes it's uh, later than I thought it would be it's 3 30 and now it's time to do my eyebrows my hair is still in the coloring process um, I could talk, technically probably take it off now but um, I'm going to keep it on for a little bit longer to do the eyebrows I'm simply going to take some of the brown I have way too much here oh my gosh what was I thinking way again it needs to be a paste wow way too much water in this that's dark brown this is brown it's good enough I probably have another dark brown open somewhere but oh crap I'm gonna need scissors Part of the reason why I use all natural hennas is for my own personal health. Um, but I also am very environmentally conscious. The problem that I'm having right now is that this package, which is completely sealed, is put into this package, which is completely sealed, which is put into this package, which is completely sealed which is put into this box which is completely sealed it is far too much fucking waste and I don't care if it's compostable or not this isn't this is what drives me nuts because here we have something that is potentially better for my health and better for the environment and it's still over packaged there's no need for this and if I sound like I'm irritated and angry I am all you're going to do is take a very fine I have artist paintbrushes here and this is how you do you would not want to do this with a chemical because you don't want any chemicals near your eye but you can do it with a natural henna I do it all the time as you can see I don't have I gotta clean that up I don't have very sorry I don't have very dark eyebrows it's because I'm blonde So that's it. Now I'm just going to leave this on for a good 20 minutes and then I'm going to wash my eyebrows and I'm going to get all this color out of my hair. So what you'll note is that if you do your eyebrows the color dries up. That's partly why we put the black the bag over our hair because if we don't the color will dry out and when it's dry it doesn't uh, allow the hair to transform to the color as effectively so every now and then with your eyebrows just put a little bit of water on them it's been a half an hour so I'm just going to take the cloth and clean the color off my eyebrow and I want you to see this because it doesn't stain your skin it just simply colors the hair my eyebrows are a little bit darker not much that's why I like to use the really dark brown the ultra dark brown okay I'm gonna do the other one and then I'll wash my hair 
So the first thing you do is rinse it completely with just clear water until it runs reasonably clear or fully clear. And then if you want, use again um, a non-chemical shampoo to wash it and a non-chemical conditioner to rinse it or condition it. Um, if, especially because if you don't and you just wash it with water, this does have its own smell and you will smell that on your pillow at night. Uh, two, um, the reason why I wash my hair after with the shampoo and the conditioner um, is because if you don't, the color will bleed onto your pillowcase. So make certain that you wash it and condition it afterwards to get all of that um, color off your scalp, off the hair. And then maybe for a bit the first night or two, this is what I do, I put a uh, towel over top of my pillowcase just in case and that's it so just make sure you wash here and here and definitely where your where your hairline comes up in the back now you'll notice I don't know if you can see it I have got color on my shirt here I'm not concerned about that if this was a chemical I would have ruined this shirt but because it's a henna if I take this off right now and put it in just some clean water uh, and I have some organic laundry soap uh, this will come out instantly so I'm not too concerned about that but on that note before it sets in I am going to take this off and change my shirt similarly I don't know if you can see that very well a little bit of color came out onto my towel but again not a problem every time I wash these all that comes out because it's not a permanent it doesn't stick permanently in fabric. So I used what approximately two cups I probably could have gotten away with a cup and a half. When my hair was long I would have to use about three cups to do all of my hair. Uh, that said that was just for the first time because as I said once your hair is colored especially with henna um, you might have to do the whole hair for the first couple of times, but eventually what you'll find is it just holds in your hair really well, especially if you don't use synthetic shampoo and conditioner. If you do use chemical or synthetic shampoo and conditioner, it will strip the color out. I use, uh, I'll show you what I use. Uh, this is called Everyday Coconut Shampoo and they have a conditioner as well. This is all natural. There's no chemicals or parabens or anything in this at all. Um, I like the coconut because coconut's hydrating for the hair. This is a nice hydration moisturizing for your hair or just plain coconut oil, plain avocado oil, plain olive oil, almond oil, anything like that. Um, you can just run it through your hair just a little wee bit on your hands and that will moisturize uh, your hair. Uh, especially if you use a flat iron or a blow dryer. Typically I let my hair for the most part air dry and then I do the final styling if it needs it um, with the blow dryer. I don't use a flat iron anymore uh, or a curling iron or anything like that. Uh, so that's it. That's, uh, that's the product I use and that's how I use it. And It's real simple and easy and good for me and my health and good for the environment. So thanks for the prompt and I hope that you have enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed creating it. And until I see you in the next video, ciao for now.